Milliseconds make millions. This intriguing statement may seem to be strange, but it fully reflects the sense of crafting solutions that prioritize performance by default, which in fact, based on my experience, is something unique rather than the default aspects of uh, crafting WordPress solutions. Clients often ask us for help uh, in this area, sometimes just after spending a lot of time and money on the development process. In many cases, it occurs that the developer didn't pay attention to performance, and in the last stages they install auto-optimize plugin or some caching solutions telling the client that it is enough to make it fast. And don't tell me that you haven't experienced this uh, as an author or as a performance analysis. I was doing the same until I realized that the success of the application performance relies in the initial stages of the development, not in the last ones. So, in this article I would like to try to show you a free, simple and less effort tricks that should help you improve the performance by default since beginning. I will try to prove that making simple architectural decisions can boost up your application performance even before you write a line of code. So, let's begin! It's important to describe the testing conditions used during the test, so I will work on the database with 2 million entries on my local environment. I know, I know that not every WordPress operates on such numbers and the results for standard and simple websites uh, can be much uh, smaller than the results provided in those examples, but they will be still noticeable. According to the report created by the Elite team, the, even the smallest improvement might have a positive effect on the business or a brand. The findings showed that a mere 0.1 seconds reduction in load times can lead to remarkable 10% increase in conversion rates. If you are interested in more information or more examples from big brands like Pfizer, BMW or Tui, just check out this report, I will post the link on the video description. This chart presents the results of the optimization process that I've made some time ago and the website there was much smaller than 2 million entries. The tips from this article wasn't the only one that have an impact on this, but they were a really important part of the whole process. So, to have something to work on, I will be measuring the simple thing like time spent on querying the latest thousand posts from the database. The standard query takes about 2 seconds and it isn't really so much, especially on my local environment that is mostly slower than production. However, please note that it is only one query on the page. More queries, more components, more plugins can make it crucial. The first decision that I can make to improve the application performance since beginning is defining if I need the classic pagination. By default, when performing WP query, WordPress includes SQL calc found rows statement in the SQL to determine the total number of rows that match the criteria. This is done to handle classic pagination component and uh, in most cases it is used for displaying the latest available page on the page. Page on the page. Uh, the last available page in the whole query. So, uh, in some cases it might be demanding, especially for larger projects. Let's say that I need to create a widget that displays the latest thousand posts in the page content. Do I need the pagination in this specific case? Totally not, I just need to display the latest thousand posts and nothing more, so such calculation is not needed and I can disable this by setting no found rows parameter of WP query to true. What are the results then? The querying times have, have been reduced about 20%. And some people would say that that's only 20%, but I think that if we gain even the 5 percent of improvement, it is still worth, especially if it's just adding one simple parameter and doing exactly what we need. There are plenty useful cases for this tip, um, let's say that uh, I know since the beginning that the system I build will have a lot of content and users. So in this case, instead of displaying classic pagination with the last available page, I can build an archive using the load more button. Um, I know that at some point uh, user will catch the not found and no results page, uh, but I don't consider it as a problem if we design good looking not found page. 
We can also use the Infinity Scroll pagination uh, instead of classic ones, uh, which reduces those problems. I've noticed that the best results are achieved in the large website and heavy website. So it is worth remembering? Totally it is. I can never be sure in what circumstances my application will be working, so if I can reduce the potential problem since the beginning, especially if the solution is so simple, I will take it. The second tip is also super simple and it is just telling WordPress what do I exactly want, nothing more. WP Query by default returns a collection of WP Posts objects that match the criteria. In some cases, the only thing I need is the collection of IDs, so building the full object to map them again to IDs is not needed. I can inform WordPress uh, that I just need IDs by setting fields parameter in the WP query to IDs. In this case, the querying time is about 0.02 seconds and it is improvement on the 122 times and that's a huge boost. And since those are the results that I always wish to get, it is not as perfect as it looks. Getting the collection of IDs is in the most cases not enough, so let's try to get uh, the post meta additional. At first I just make a standard query with setting fields to IDs and then I use the array map to get additional meta query. Well, let's say that it is the number of views. The querying times now are about 0.7 seconds and it is a 3 time improvement comparing to the standard query. So again, asking WordPress about only the thing I need improved the application performance three times. Let's say that uh, we have 100 requests on our page. By using this simple trick, we reduce the querying times by 140 seconds and more users, more traffic on your website made this even more crucial. What about you guys? Do you have any ideas of using only just IDs for querying the results? Uh, in the project I built, it have a few uh, use cases, but they are really custom, so uh, I won't uh, discuss them here. Um, but I'm interested in your ideas. Do you have one? Let me know in the comments. It is also important to add that this trick applies mostly to the most simple queries that uses only the WP post table. If we add the meta query on tax query, the querying times might be longer because the SQL have to touch multiple tables to narrow down the results. And now it's time for the most powerful performance trick that I use in many WordPress projects, which is related to filtering the results. Planning the data architecture is in the common habit in many WordPress projects. When the custom data needs to be stored for posts, it mostly lands in the post meta table. And tell me honestly, how often do you think about playing the data architecture? Let me know in the comments. Using post meta table for storing the data that should be displayed it is fine, but if we want to use it for filtering, there could be some problems. So before I define the data that should be stored, I ensure if it should or can be used for filtering. If so, I use the taxonomy instead of meta for storing the data. Implementing this is not as simple as the previous step, so I will create a separated video about this, but I have something for the people who use advanced custom field for managing the custom data. Instead of using the default fields types like text or select for storing the data that uh, should be used for filtering, use taxonomy field type and enable save terms in the field options. The plugin will automatically assign taxonomies to items based on the choice. Let's try to make some tests now. This example stores the spot data as a string value in the post meta table. So the querying times when using meta query are about 10 seconds and that's a lot, especially for the huge system with huge traffic. The next example presents the results when we use taxonomies, so the spot is a term in the spot taxonomy. When using tax query, the querying times are about 3 seconds, so using taxonomies for filtering results in 3 times faster queries than when using post meta. And those are the results I wish to always get. You might wonder why it works this way, why the taxonomies are much faster than the post meta. The answer is pretty simple and it lies in the WordPress database design. Imagine you have a large book with hundreds of pages and you need to find some specific topic. 
Without an index, you need to manually search the whole book one page by one until you will find the relevant information. And this is how the post meta table works. Then imagine that this book have an index at the end. So if you need to search for a specific topic, you now you don't need to revert every page and validate this because you are going to the index, search for the uh, topic and go directly to the page that includes this information. And this is how taxonomy works. Taxonomy's terms and the relationships are uh, indexed, so it is how the WordPress is able to find them faster. It is really powerful technique that I use in many WordPress projects and it gives me a lot of boost, but uh, I need to add that it is not so perfect. In some cases, it might bring other problems. For example, uh, it shouldn't be applied to all the data types. It works well for the sport attribute, which consists of specific and limited set of values. But when it comes to the attributes consist of infinite set, like for example athletes, it might be problematic. Also, the huge systems consist of a lot of posts or uh, users might have some other performance problems. WordPress fires the time recount process every time the post terms are changed, for example when post is created, updated or removed, which results in longer operation times. WordPress analyzes the total number of items in the whole database that match the specific term, and it can be really time-consuming in huge systems. I've solved this problem by deferring this process using native WP functions. So for example, the code here presents the simplest case, and it, of course it doesn't fix all the problems, but I will get back to this topic in the future videos. So as you can see, we have some possibilities, but we need to handle them additionally. Simple uh, projects shouldn't have them, because the databases are uh, mostly smaller than 2 million posts, but you need to know about this. The performance results using those techniques cannot be always so significant, because everything depends. It depends on the environment, on the database size, on the number of users that uses your website. In general, everything depends. The table here presents the results with clean WordPress and 1000 and 10,000 simple posts. As you can see, there is no difference between default query and the one that skips pagination, but improvement caused by returning IDs is still noticeable. You might think that those numbers can be not comparable with your project, so just test it on your own. Maybe you are struggling with performance problems, you've done a lot of things and the website is still slow? Just give them a try and use the following snippet to test the results. Modify the query using the techniques described in this video and maybe you will find, find the one that should help you. If so, please let me know in the comments. If not, I will be also pleased to hear your thoughts. I hope that at least one of those tips will help you. If not, that's weird, because they work for me. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to thumbs up. If you don't enjoy this, please leave, remember to let me know in the comments what can I do better to stay up with you? What can I improve to make the better content? I appreciate every type of feedback, so thank you for this. If you don't subscribe me already, please remember to hit the subscribe button and I also would like to invite you to my other channels like the Twitter on my website. If they are consist of many useful uh, thoughts uh, that are not presented uh, on this uh, YouTube channel, so I insist you to check out those channels. Thank you for your time again and see you next time. Bye bye.